Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So this week's seasonal story has really started to get tense. The season of The Lost has thrown some volatile characters and plot threads together, and I have a feeling that this is all leading to them boiling over in the next few weeks. Principle above all, I think it's soon going to be time for Crow to learn about his past life as Aldrin Sov. For those of you who weren't around to see what happened earlier this week, let's go ahead and just play out the various cutscenes and conversations that happened. Osiris was like family to me. You've never even met him. I know. Just let me speak to Sabathun, please. No. I won't give that witch another chance to dig her claws into you. Maybe she's right, Crow. You know I am. Sabathun is already in your head. You're a liability to the mission. Why do you have such a problem with me, Petra? Five minutes, that's all I'm asking. The Queen of the Reef forbids it. Well, I don't take commands from the Queen of the Reef. Sabathun unraveled the Dreaming City with a single wish. I've spent years trying to contain that mistake. Better men than you died because of it. To my ear, it sounds like you're the liability. Maybe your queen's trust in you was misplaced. A knife against a hunter? <laughs> I'd be more careful who you pick fights with. Another step, and my corsairs will have to prepare you a second grave. Save it for the hive, both of you. This isn't getting us anywhere. Thank you. We could all probably use a minute to cool off. Oh. Oh no. Keep both eyes on that one. You can't stop the inevitable. No one can. Though Petra Venn seems perfectly willing to try. I've always sympathized with Crow, you know. All the kind words I shared with him as Osiris we're sincere. I know what it's like to be in exile. To be hated for things outside of your control. It would be better for Crow if we talked. I want to explain why I did what I did. I want him to know that my affection is true. Because the less he knows, the more vulnerable he is. Doomed to be strung along by false promises from supposed benefactors. But then again, I'm the one trapped in the crystal prison. What do I know? Venge thinks I'm vulnerable, and I'm supposed to just take a seat? Like I was the only one fooled by Savathun wearing Osiris's skin? You'd known him far longer than I thought I had, but I don't see her forbidding you from speaking to her. Because it's not about me. It's about who I was, isn't it? Every time the Vanguard tells me that things will get better, I thank them. As if it's a privilege not to be beaten to death. Our past lives aren't supposed to matter. I'm beginning to wonder why I'm the only guardian being judged by mine. No more apologies. No more creeping around on eggshells. I deserve an audience with Sabathun. I deserve to know how much of what she told me as Osiris was a lie. I deserve answers. I don't need to be Marasov to see into your mind, Guardian. You think I'm making a mistake. You think I barred Crow out of pettiness. I won't say I didn't recommend it, but it was the Queen's order for his own safety. I see Prince Aldrin's arrogance in him, his desire to please, He's vulnerable. Aldrin and your crow are echoes of each other. Surely you can see that. They share kindred weaknesses. Sabathun will exploit them again if we let her. But with Mara back, I can finally see the end approaching. It's been a long time coming. There are still Techians in need of your strength. I wish I could fill their place, but this must be how things are. I'm here if you need me. Crow and Petra are, to put it mildly, a pair of characters that have quite a history. In fact, in the cutscene that just played out canonically, the only person who wasn't there to see all of their history 
was Glint. Awkward for him, much more awkward for us as the one who might have killed him in his past life, and of course incredibly awkward for Crow who hasn't got the foggiest idea what's going on seeing as he lost his memories when he began his new life. For those of you who weren't around at the time of Forsaken or who didn't play, I feel like this needs to be made clear. Either you or Petrovenge pulled the trigger and killed Prince Aldrin in the events of Forsaken. So yeah, awkwardness abounds as everyone works out what it really means. This is of course the big reveal for Crow that all of this has been leading up to, and I think chief amongst Savathun's plans is her optimistic plan to manipulate Crow into doing her bidding by using this lack of knowledge that he has of his past life. She presented a very sympathetic appeal to him, but this is very much relying on the same weaknesses that we saw in Aldrin. Both Aldrin and Crow are reliably driven by loyalty and the kinship of sorts that Crow built over the months with Savathun under the guise of Osiris has led to her having a great hold over him. Petra explains more of this when we speak to her later at the Wayfinder's Compass, of course. So I guess the next big question really concerns Savathun. Well, questions, not question. Firstly, what's her intent here? Well, I think that if we look at the most obvious motives of Savathun, it's really going to be to reveal who Crow was in his past life to him. If she does this, I have no doubt that she'll twist the information to her benefit. She already tried to gaslight us in that one cutscene, and gaslighting poor Crow would be a thing like child's play for her, given her penchant for deception. What she probably doesn't want to reveal to Crow is that she lies at the very top of the chain of causality that has built his misery in this new life. Riven of a Thousand Voices might have been the one to corrupt and whisper to Aldrin, but this seems to have all been done with the aim of granting the last wish. Cade's death and Aldrin's betrayal are all truly the plan of the Witch Queen. If she were to obtain the chance to obfuscate the truth and to point to the more obvious emotive elements of the story, such as our murder of Aldrin, she would use that to tear a rift between us and Crow, and maybe even more importantly, use it to destabilize the power structure of the Reef if Crow was to go after Petra. More than this, I wonder if there's a reason that Savathun has been able to get under Crow's skin so easily, and I think to be brutally honest, it's not just to do with his naivety. I think the reason is also to do with her song. Savathun's song is not a new phenomenon, but NPCs have been heard humming or singing it for years, and frankly it's got to a point where it's really quite worrying. I've got a video coming out at some point soon on this topic, but I think that the basics worth knowing are simply that the song seems to make its listeners more susceptible to Savathun's suggestion and control. The exact nature of this control isn't clear, but it also is unknown if that's actually its function. But at this point, I think we can all gauge that regardless of what its function is, undoubtedly it's dangerous and it shouldn't be trusted. All of this leads me to a very simple conclusion, which is that in our own time, perhaps we need to sit down with Crow, maybe with Ikora, Zavala, Petra, maybe even Mara, as well as ourselves, and we need to talk about everything that happened. We need to tell him about Aldrin's past life, maybe even going all the way back to Aldwyn, which I'm sure is a history that Mara would better leave forgotten. We need to talk about how he served in the Reef and was Mara's right hand in the Distributory. We need to talk to him about the various moments at which his story changed. We need to talk to him about Mara's sacrifice and how it affected him in his previous life. All of it leading up to that moment in Forsaken, where Cade's weapon, the Ace of Spades, was taken up in the hands of a traitor and the trigger was pulled. This, of course, is going to be a tough story to tell. And frankly, we need to tell it very carefully, and with all the honesty we can, whilst also trying to pinpoint the moments at which Savathun's deception was clearly at play, the moments at which Aldrin had been led astray by Riven, and we need to point to the idea that this is why Crow can't speak with Savathun, because the same deception can happen again. And if it does, we don't know what the consequences will be this time, but it's clear that whatever they may be, they will be calamitous. They will be dangerous. Crow is not the same as Aldrin. Crow doesn't carry the tens of thousands of millennia worth of baggage. 
that Aldrin did. He doesn't have the same understanding of his relationship with the Queen that he used to. This gives us a form of advantage in a certain sense, because maybe we can appeal to who he truly is, his base personality, and everything that he ends up being in this new life doesn't need to be affected by that baggage. I think now also this would be a moment for healthy growth for Crow compared to who he was as Aldrin. It would be a moment where he might be able to let go of the past and might be able to say definitively that he is no longer tied down to anyone. Which for him is not only appropriate as a hunter, but also would free him from the previous restraints and desperate character flaws that were born of his loyalty to Mara Sov. It might also point him towards the place that Mara indicated he might reach in the seasonal exotic quest for Arga's Scepter, where she foresaw that he would be a great leader. And one day, if he does reach that place, I imagine that we all know where that might be, as the new Hunter Vanguard mentor, taking his place rightfully as Cade Six's successor. But equally, if we fail, it's only going to drive Crow further into the claws of the Witch Queen, something that would be calamitous for everyone involved. Only a fool would trust Savathun at this point, but Crow was only recently reborn, and still has so much to learn about the world. Even if he didn't, he still holds the same pliable weaknesses as Aldrin did, and I think we simply need to hope that we are able to resolve the conflict ahead successfully, and appeal to Crow's better angels. But, that's all from me for now. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to leave your own thoughts, leave them down below in the comments section. How do you guys think this is going to play out? Do you think that Crow is going to stick by our side? Do you think that he will waver? Do you think that he will fall entirely into the Witch Queen's clutches? Do you think that her plans will succeed, or will we scatter them once more, like we supposedly did with Quoria, if Mara is to be believed? All of these and many other questions are yet to unfold, but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Of course, if you want more Destiny content, also go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.